So today, DJI just made my life a whole lot easier with the release of their next generation wireless microphone system, the Mic 2. Now, out of all of the equipment that I use on a daily basis, the cameras, the lenses, the tripods, the gimbals, the drones, the memory cards, out of all of that stuff, DJI's original wireless microphone system, the DJI Mics, have probably been the piece of gear that's made my life the easiest when I'm out shooting. On the day today, I shoot social media content for different individuals and brands in my area here in Philadelphia, with most of these people wanting to be on camera talking and as we know your audio quality is just as if not more important than the actual video itself like i can personally excuse a video that isn't lit properly or might be blurry from cropping or even the compression that comes with uploading to a social media platform but one thing that will make me tune out almost immediately is poor audio this is why the dji mics have been so valuable to me and my workflow i'm always on the go i'm always running and gunning so knowing that i have a microphone that i can clip onto somebody's clothing and get nice high quality audio every single time really does make my job a lot easier in fact it made it so easy that i carry two sets with me at all times this gives me the ability to say have a redundant pair in case one set breaks but also i can mic up to four people up at once it's great because i can just take out one of the transmitters i can clip it onto somebody's shirt or i can put it on their belt buckle or in their pocket and run a lav mic up their shirt and i can just press record let it record to the flash audio and sync up my audio later in post so hopefully i've set the scene as to how much i love these little microphones but these are about to be retired as dj has just dropped the newest version which is of course called the dji mic 2. the mic 2 here is very similar to the original wireless audio microphone set from dji in a sense that it has the charging case it has two transmitters and one receiver but from here everything else has been upgraded to give you an overall better audio capture experience so in case you aren't familiar to give you a quick rundown as to how these microphones work you've got two transmitters and one receiver each of the transmitters have a built-in microphone and eight gigabytes of onboard storage so you can use them as little standalone mics right from the device you can press record and it'll save the audio directly to the flash memory on board you can also plug in a microphone that uses a 3.5 millimeter jack to store audio captured on that device instead of the built-in microphone on the transmitter this means that you could use a lav mic or you could even plug in a shotgun microphone if you wanted to set up a remote audio source if you're recording audio with these microphones though you'll probably be using them in unison with the receiver which allows you to control the transmitters when you have them set up to capture audio on yourself or another individual and will of course wirelessly capture the audio from from both transmitters into the source of your choice this means that you can take the 3.5 millimeter cable included in the box and bake that audio right into the video file that you capture on your camera or you could use one of the included adapters to plug the receiver into your phone thus replacing the audio that is captured with the onboard microphone those little adapters slide into the pins on the back side of the receiver the two transmitters the receiver and the two smartphone adapters all conveniently fit into the charging case which helps you keep everything together and ensures that your modules are always fully charged it also acts as a charging hub so if all of your batteries are depleted you can just plug in one USB-C cable to the case and everything gets power so no matter what type of video you're creating the mic 2 is like a little swiss army knife it can literally adapt to any situation giving you nice high quality audio regardless now the final thing i want to mention about the mics here about the actual design is the build quality because as you can imagine these things will get thrown around quite a bit like the case itself gets dropped on the ground thrown in my backpack and the transmitters get attached to people's clothing they go into a person's pocket with their keys and phone i mean these things get put in the line of fire and they just keep working the design of the mics and case is a huge step up over the first generation with a more sturdy build the moving components feel solid the buttons are clicky and tactile the screen is bright and easy to navigate and the flexibility makes them overall very versatile to use like if i want to capture audio with just the transmitter then i can use the clip to attach it onto a piece of clothing if the clip won't work then i can use the included magnet to pin it underneath of a piece of clothing which is nice because it also helps you conceal the mic a little bit better if you want to hide the transmitter altogether you can use a lav mic to plug it into the transmitter which can then go into a pocket or clip onto the waistband of pants or a belt this is a lot more lightweight when you're dealing with some loose fit clothing with that said before we get into the nuances of the mic 2 like the sound quality and the recording capabilities let's first wrap up the physical design of the mics themselves and the accessories so when you pick up your mic 2 set it'll come inside of this carrying bag with the charging case and modules two windscreens a usb a to usb c charging cable and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack there's plenty of room to fit other accessories too like lav mics and maybe like a small set of headphones so this little pouch can be 
like your audio recording bag with all of your things in one place. Now, speaking of the lav, this is the first time that DJI has made their own lavalier mic, which has just enough slack so that it can reach from your waist area up to the collar of your shirt. It has a clip for affixing onto your clothing, and the little windscreen is tightly fastened so it doesn't pop off easily when you're moving around or setting the mic up. If you instead are using the built-in mic on the transmitter, I'd recommend attaching the windscreen to cut down on the wind noise and any pops that come from saying certain words. It attaches so easily too by sliding this plastic piece into the 3.5 millimeter jack holding it in place. Okay, I've made you wait long enough. Now let's finally get into the sound quality and recording capabilities here of the mic too, which most notably gives you a better sounding audio file. It'll give you built-in noise cancellation so it drowns out the background noise and isolates your voice right within the microphone. And it also gives you the ability to capture 32-bit float audio for more flexibility when editing your audio in post. Okay, so this here is audio captured directly from the DJI Mic 1, so this is the original transmitter with the built-in microphone, and I haven't touched up this audio at all. This is the audio file directly from the storage on the microphone, so it doesn't go through any of the preamps on my Sony A1. Now, I typically have a preset that I run with my voice to decrease background noise, boost my voice, and overall make the audio sound better. You're now hearing the audio with that preset to see the difference that it makes. Basically, every piece of audio that I record gets treated in some way to make it sound better. Now here to readjust your ears, I'm going to take off that preset that I use and bring you back to how the microphone sounds with nothing applied. So we're back to square one. Now I also have the DJI Mic 2 in my hand here about a foot away from my mouth. So now we're going to switch over to the built-in microphone of the new mic. And I have to say there really is no difference to my ear of the audio quality right from the microphone. Just like the original DJI Mic, it sounds a little bit flat, but with that same preset applied, it makes my voice sound brighter. It isolates it, cutting out some of the background noise and open space and overall makes it sound more crisp. Okay, let me reset your ears again and bring you back to the raw audio so this is completely untouched and is directly off of the microphone. We're now going to switch over to DJI's new lav mic plugged into the mic too so this audio you're listening to is straight off of the flash memory and wow, I think this mic here sounds so good. It's noticeably better than the built-in microphone on the transmitter as it sounds more full and bright. Just like the other audio files, I can also add a preset to this audio file to isolate my voice and make it sound that much better. This here is probably going to be my go-to setup when recording audio out of the studio, the mic 2 with the DJI Lav mic attached recording and 32-bit float audio because man, this sounds great. Okay, so we've mentioned 32-bit float audio recording a couple of times in this video, and I want to make sure we're on the same page here. So 32-bit float audio doesn't make that audio file directly off of your microphone sound better. Instead, it gives you more flexibility when editing that file in post. You can kind of compare it to editing a RAW photograph compared to a JPEG photograph. So when we capture our photos in RAW, we can change the white balance and exposure after the fact as if we we're actually capturing it in camera right there. So it gives us the ability to save a photo that is maybe too overexposed or too underexposed and the same is true with 32-bit float audio. If we record audio that's too loud or too quiet, we can bring it back to normal right within the normal listening range without actually damaging the audio file. So it gives us more range above and below the normal decibels that we want our audio to be recorded at. I have to give a huge shout out to Julian Krauss who has a great video on 32-bit float audio and its benefits, which I'll leave linked below. He starts the video off by showing the ability to recover audio files that are exported as clipping to be too loud or that are way too quiet and then how when you try to recover the audio on a 32-bit float file it can be restored to a clean file with nice sounding audio. I would highly recommend checking out his video because he goes into way more depth about 32-bit float audio recording than I will here in this video but I do want to leave you with one real world example where 32-bit float audio recording completely saved my ass. So here in South Jersey I was filming a small convention for real estate agents where they can hear from authorities in the space on how to improve their business. One of the speakers that came out was way louder than the rest of the speakers, and because I was so focused on capturing his entrance and his actions, I didn't have the chance to change the decibel level of the mic that I put on him before going up. I'm going to play the audio from his entrance, and I just want to warn you that it is very, very loud, so if you've got headphones in, maybe turn down your volume, or maybe just straight up mute the video, because the audio was clipping like crazy. <laughs> everyone how's everyone doing <laughs> okay so yeah that intro was pretty wild again I'm so sorry if you were wearing headphones even if you turned your audio down it still probably heard your ears because the sound was clipping it was scratching in camera it was totally unusable I could never deliver that to a client as I mentioned the video might be fine but if the audio sounded like that 
you're probably going to turn out and you're probably never going to want to even watch that video. But because I recorded it in 32 bit float audio directly to the microphone, it completely saved me. So here's the difference. Oh, make some noise, everyone. Oh, yes. Have a seat, everyone. How's everyone doing? So all I did there was lower the audio by about 16 decibels, so negative 16 decibels, and it brought it down to a usable range. It still was a little bit distorted because he was just yelling so loud and the microphone was so close to his mouth. But again, to see how much range that you can have there to recover really is impressive. Now, I think the best way to visualize this is to look at the waveform from those examples that you just listened to. So I've got the first audio clip that you listened to, which is actually just extracted from the video taken on my Sony A1. So this is the audio that was based directly into the video file from the transmitter to the receiver. You can see that the levels have no depth to them, and as I tried to bring the volume down, you've got this flat line here because the audio went past the point of recovery. This means that no matter how I adjust the decibel level, the audio will still scratch and sound terrible. Compare this, however, to the 32-bit float audio file right off the flash memory on the transmitter, and I can actually bring this down, again, a full negative 16 decibels, and we still haven't clipped. So as my buddy Colton is screaming at the top of his lungs over the music and crowd noise, I can fully recover this audio file thanks to 32-bit float audio. What an absolute game changer this is. Like for me, I don't record many of these crazy events where people are going to be yelling and screaming, but it's nice to know that in my daily shooting where I'm talking to the camera, or one of my clients is talking to the camera, that I'm going to be able to capture a nice usable audio file basically no matter what. This just adds another level of reliability in these microphones that didn't come in my previous DJI mics, right? So I know that if there's going to be someone that speaks a little bit lower, or maybe a little bit louder, I can recover that in post, no problem, no questions asked. Now to take a quick deep dive into the receiver menu, this little screen is how you're going to monitor your connection strength, the battery, the decibel levels, and overall control of your transmitters. Swiping down will bring you to the different settings you can adjust for the receiver, transmitter, and device in general. This gives you the ability to record mono, stereo, or you can record a safety track. You can adjust the gain of your receiver and transmitters. You can change the dates. Really anything you need to change can be found in these different menus use by swiping through. I think one of my favorite additions, however, is this new wheel, which lets you quickly change the gain on the fly. So if I push this button in once, it lets me adjust the gain to the receiver between negative 12 and positive 12 decibels. Pressing again will let me change the decibels on the first transmitter, and then doing so again will let me control the second transmitter. Right from this screen, I can also swipe up on the first transmitter to access the controls for that module, or I can swipe up on the second transmitter for that module. From this menu, I can individually mute the microphone, I can start and stop recording, or I can enable the new noise cancellation feature. Along with 32-bit float audio recording, this is another big feature that's been added to the next generation of wireless mics from DJI to help kind of separate them from those original versions, because again, they are fairly similar in their design and in what they're able to do. But now that you have 32-bit float audio recording built in, and the fact that you can now use this AI noise cancellation feature to isolate your voice right within the mics can make it seem like a very worthy upgrade. So what would be a good way to test this out? I figured we'd try a leaf blower. So this first test is with the DJI Mic 2 straight up outside of my shirt, right in front of my mouth. As I kick on the leaf blower, you start to completely lose me as the wind and sound of the motor completely overpower my voice, leaving me with an unusable audio file that probably won't be recoverable. Now a good way to remove wind noise is to use the built-in windscreen, which does a good job of cutting out the wind noise as I turn on the leaf blower. But the sound of the motor is still there and really drowns out my voice, which again, makes the audio tough to clean up and actually use in a video. So what about this new noise cancellation feature? I've removed the windscreen and now have that noise cancellation feature enabled, which just can't seem to drown out all of this background noise. It doesn't work as well as I would have hoped. Adding the windscreen here, however, does help the noise cancellation feature out as it just has to focus on removing the constant sound of the motor and the background. It still isn't perfect though as you get some distortion in my voice and the sound of the motor is still prevalent but at least the wind is gone thanks to the windscreen. This had me wondering though, what if I took these same audio files and ran them through Adobe's AI audio enhancing tool, would they sound any better? So this first test is with the DJI Mic 2 straight up outside of my shirt right in front of my mouth. As I kick on the leaf blower, you start to completely lose me as the wind and sound of the motor completely overpower my voice, leaving me with an unusable audio file that probably won't be recoverable. I'll tell you what, Adobe's AI Audio Enhance tool works like magic. I don't understand how they do it. It sounds like they almost rebuild your voice and give you a new audio file using their AI. Look, it can take some of the worst sounding audio clips and make them sound like they were recorded in a professional studio, and it really is impressive. Now here is one final example. I'm standing just next to Interstate 76, 
running through Philadelphia with hundreds of cars, buses, and trains passing by at high speeds every minute. I have both of my Mic 2s recording, one with noise cancellation turned off and one with it turned on. So right now, you're listening to the completely untreated audio and my voice is overshadowed by the background noise of those cars. If I switch over to the mic with the noise cancellation turned on, it does a good job at isolating my voice while making me sound natural, unlike the super robotic tone of the Adobe AI Audio Enhance. There is a little bit of distortion, I can tell, as the software is trying to cut out the background noise as best as it can, but it sure is better than hearing the cars super loud in the background. Now just for fun, why don't we try adding that Adobe AI Auto Enhance to this example audio clip. So now the background noise almost completely disappears, but as I mentioned, I do sound a little bit robotic. So the mic 2 is a fantastic upgrade over the original mic set from DJI. I'll definitely be replacing both of my mic sets in my backpack with the new version with the mic 2. So I'll have two of these in my backpack at all times for recording audio while I'm on the go. Some notable upgrades for me, why I think that this is such an important upgrade is the build quality. I think it feels more premium. The battery life, the battery life in the modules and the receiver and the transmitters is way better, but also the charging case is bigger to hold a bigger battery so you can just spend more time shooting on the road and not have to worry about continuing to charge your modules. I also love the pouch that it comes with. I love the 32-bit float audio. The AI noise cancellation feature is okay. I think I'd rather just record without it turned on and then use Adobe's AI audio tool if I have to after the fact. Um, I would rather not bake it directly into the audio file that I record, but nonetheless, it is a step in the right direction and with some future firmware updates, maybe it could be improved to be even better than what Adobe offers. So overall, great upgrade here from DJI with their like two and i'll be using this on the daily so dj you have made my life a whole lot easier anyway thank you guys so much for watching and as always i'll talk to you in the next one peace